that Jesus had victory on the cross, that we need no longer be fearful of anything because you have come to save us and to set us free. We thank you, Lord, that we have a home in heaven. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. And so, Father, as we just come before you this morning and we worship you,
Well, good morning and welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're joining with us. After such an eventful week, isn't it great for us just to stop and pause and worship our great God? In 1 Chronicles, we read this, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done. Sing to Him, sing praise to Him, tell of all His wonderful acts. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name bring an offering and come before him well we're coming before the lord this morning we're bringing an offering of praise and worship of of honor we're bowing before him and we are declaring among the nations that he is god that he is above all things that he is the king of kings the lord of lords and the prince of peace and so we worship Won't you pray with me? God, our Heavenly Father, we give all glory and all honour to you this morning. We praise you, Lord, for all of the great things that you have done. We praise you, Lord, for your creation. We praise you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, and give praise for salvation. We thank you, Lord, for transformation, for new beginnings and for your Holy Spirit who who is with us wherever we go. And so, Heavenly Father, this morning, as we bow before you, as we worship you, We pray, Lord, that we will lift high the name of Jesus. We will lift high Jesus' name. That everything that we say and do will give glory and honour to you and to you alone. And we pray this in your Son's mighty and precious name this morning. Amen. time in our courtyard on Friday uh, joining and watching a movie together. It was so wonderful to have families from our preschool and Henley Centre but also families from our core just coming together and and, uh, watching a movie and it was a great time. 
Now, you won't want to miss out on our next event, which will be a tailgate party on November 15. There'll be more f details following, but that's essentially just going to be us watching the football. Bring your own food. We will practice social distancing. And don't worry, worship and the word will still be happening in the middle of our tailgate party. Christmas is coming. And Ollie is looking for bell ringers and helpers for toy and joy. And so look out for emails. If you don't even get an email, why don't you email or call Ollie and let him know, hey, I want to help out. He'd be looking forward to hearing from you. And also look out for some exciting announcements regarding Real Gift, which is coming soon. It, we're still going to be celebrating the Real Gift of Christmas. It might be a little bit different than we've done in the past, but look out and have your ears open and your eyes ready to see see and to hear what's going to happen. Don't forget, if this is your first time with us, go to satrconnect.org. We want to connect with you. We want to uh, bring you close in our family and we want to share with you. So satrconnect.org. If you want to share our live stream with friends, family, co-workers, uh, neighbours down the street, satrlivestream.org. Share our live stream. Let people get connected with us in that way. And also, don't forget that you can still make your offerings at satrgiving.org. You can still bring your offerings to the storehouse, to our place of worship at satrgiving.org. Let's continue our worship this morning. We're just singing along with us. Here we go. One, two, three, four. When I can't see you, I know. When I can see you, I know you're here. When I can feel you, I will not fear. Yes, I will trust in you, and I will not be afraid. And when the battle is close at hand, and others with me to help me stand, yes, I will trust in you, and I will not. Yes, I will not be afraid. Yes, I will not be afraid. Yes, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. And when the darkness is closing in and I am running, Against the wind, yes, I will trust in you, and I will not be afraid. Because when I'm standing upon that shore, and all the battles they have gone before, yes, I will trust in you, and I will not be afraid. I will not. Yes, I will not be afraid. with me. Through you the blind will see. Through you the mute will sing. Through you the dead will rise. Through you our hearts will praise. Through you the darkness flees. Through you my heart screams. I am free. Yes, I am Yes, 
a great God. We serve a God that is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. And this morning as we focus in on hearing from God, we want to pray that God will speak deep into our hearts. I believe that this morning that God has a word for you in this season. God has a word to shape your destiny and shape more than just your destiny, shape the destiny of our nation. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. And in a few days' time, as our federal election will be held, where people will determine and decide who will be their next king or leader, oh Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom. Lord, I pray for our leaders, that you give them a discerning spirit and that you grant them the wisdom of Solomon, that they will lead us well, that they will lead us knowing that you, Father, are ultimately in charge of all things. Oh God, you are the sovereign king of all things. And Lord, we just pray, Father, for this great nation, the United States of America. Lord, we pray for peace. Father, as our nation has been awoken by inequity and and injustice, Lord, I pray that you'll bring a spirit of calmness, that you'll bring a spirit of understanding. God, as I pray, as our nation deals with its future, oh Lord, I pray that we will recognize that you, God, I am in control of all things. You are the sovereign God. There is no limit to your authority or your power. And Father, we acknowledge who you are. You are King Jesus. And we worship you above all things. And so Lord, as the word of your word is spoken this morning, I pray, Father, that I may become less, so that you may become great, that you will speak into our hearts this morning profoundly to shape us, to change us, to make us more like Jesus. We ask this in and through your son's holy and precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, this morning I'm going to read to you from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. I believe that God was speaking to the people of Israel when he called upon Samuel. And he called upon Samuel after he was disappointed and rejected Saul as Israel's king. 
And in 1 Samuel chapter 16, God is about to anoint a new leader, a new king for Israel. And this is what God says to Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me, the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. And when he arrived in Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come at, to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Elab and thought, surely the Lord anointed stands before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider the appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse had Shammai pass by, but Samuel said, nor has th these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered. He's tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. I will not sit down until he arrives. Now this passage of Scripture is profoundly important for us in this day and time. Right at the very beginning, we see Samuel reluctantly follows the call of God upon his life. Samuel reluctantly follows God's prompting to reject Saul. He says to him in verse 1 of 1 Samuel 16, How long will you mourn for Saul? Well, what was it about Saul that God had rejected? Saul was a great king. He was a military king. He was strong in stature, powerful in appearance. He was a great military combat warrior. But yet God rejected him, not because of his competency or his skills and his ability. God rejected him because he failed to have an obedient heart and spirit and followed the prompting of God, the Holy Spirit. He decided to go into battle before Samuel came and gave the blessing. In fact, he said, I'm leaving and I'm going to do the blessing because my men are growing restless and they're fearful. And as their fear grows, he says, well, I don't want to lose great warriors. So what did he do? He did the blessing and he performed the role that Saul was appointed to do. He didn't listen to God's prompting, and he didn't listen to God's orders, orders and doesn't listen to God's commands and wait for Samuel. He went ahead, and he did his own thing. And yet in 1 Samuel 16, we see Samuel struggle with what God was calling him to do next, to reject Israel's king and appoint another. And this story and this appointment is really a fascinating insight in how God chooses and how God appoints those who will follow His lead. And as Samuel arrives and sees Jesse, and sees Jesse in Bethlehem, and he sees Elab, and he goes, man, that guy looks good. Look at him. Handsome, strong, tall. He looks like a military sort of a guy. You know those guys. You know Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. You see him. Man, he's got muscles coming out, bulging out. That guy, that guy looks good. 
He looks intimidating. He looks like a warrior, a guy ready for battle. And Samuel said, that must be the guy. No. God rejected him. That's not what I'm looking for. Man looks at the outward appearance. And God says to Samuel, I'm not interested in how he looks. I'm not even interested in how tall he is or how strong he is or how capable he is. I'm looking at something deeper. Amen? God's looking at something deeper within you and I. He's not looking at how you may appear on the outside. He wants to know how your heart condition is. See, Samuel was yet to be aligned with God's plan and God's program. And sometimes, friends, we're the same. We're making choices based on our own agenda and our own criteria. And God says, you're not getting aligned with me. Get aligned with where I'm going and what I'm doing and what I'm calling you to be. And then Jesse has his own go and said, well, okay, he wasn't good enough. What about Abinadab? He's a good-looking guy. The second son. What about Shamna? And you know what? Both occasions, Samuel rejects. Samuel is now in alignment with God. He understands what God is calling him to do. He understands what God is seeing and says no. And he goes through the list. Jesse had eight sons, but only seven were in front of Samuel that day. And Samuel said, none of these seven are acceptable in the sight of God. And so what he says to him is, go and find that other son. Bring him to me. Oh, you know what? He's a young guy. You know, he's not, he's not like my other seven sons. In fact, that's why he wasn't even in the parade. He wasn't even presented. He wasn't even considered. His family did not consider David even worthy to stand before Samuel. They didn't even consider him and I want to tell you this morning, and this is the title of my message, God calls the unqualified and He qualifies the called. Did you hear me this morning? I believe God says to you and I, God calls the unqualified and qualifies the called. So eventually David comes in, and he comes in, and God points to Samuel again. This is a man. This is the man. And in fact, the word that God gave for David is a word that has not been accredited to any man since. This is a man after my own heart. And the word of God says in 1 Samuel 16 that God's blessing came upon him and powerfully the Spirit of God manifested itself upon David. You see, God chooses not based on your appearance, not based on your circumstances, not based on your reputation, not based on your resume. He chooses based on His plan for your life. And God started to speak upon Samuel, He says, upon David. He said, this man, this man is a man after my own heart. He was only a boy looking after his father's sheep. But God started to prophesy over this man. This young boy will be Israel's king. This young boy is chosen chosen by me. This young boy is set apart from me. This is the young boy I'm calling. God calls the unqualified, but he qualifies the call. And I want to tell you that God is calling the unqualified to step up to the ring. Young people, if you're listening to this message this morning, God is saying to you, you may not fit the criteria or the standards of the world around you, but you sit, you fit my criteria if you have an obedient heart, an obedient spirit, a heart that wants to resonate with mine, a willing heart that says I'm willing to courageously step out from my comfort zone, step out from the sheep pasture and step into the ring the ring and be counted for the things of the kingdom of God. God's calling young people. He's saying, you may think you're not good enough, you may think you're not capable, capable enough, but I'm calling you. And don't worry about your qualifications. I will qualify you because when I call the unqualified, I definitely qualify the called. And over and over again throughout the stories of Scripture, we read of how God qualifies the called. And you see what happens next in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 
Samuel, once again, turns up to a scene, and we know the scene. This is a familiar scene. This is when the Philistine Goliath was taunting and teasing the people of Israel. And for three days, the people watched Goliath taunt, tease, and mock the children of God. And David comes up, and his brothers, as you know the context, because his brothers have recognized that this man has been anointed by God, but they still are rejecting him, and they're still struggling with his call. And his brothers mock him and say, go back and look after the sheep. What are you doing here? You delivered food as our father requested and asked you to do so, but go back to where you're supposed to be. But David refuses. He refuses. He goes up to Saul, who he's been ministering to in the temple, in the king's palace. He's been ministering. And when Saul gets troubled in his mind, David plays his harp and he ministers and soothes this king's mind. And he goes up to Saul and says to Saul, David says to Saul, You know, Saul, I've taken down lions. I've taken down bears. This guy, I can take him down too. Not because of me, because the God who's in me enables me to do much more. You want to see, friends? I want to tell you, we need to have a bold confidence. We need to not shrink back, but we need to step forward and say, my God who has called me and who has placed his spirit within me and who has anointed me, I am able to do much more in His name. This is not a time to be overwhelmed. This is time to step up and be counted. Too often we're shrinking back and say, well, you know what? Look at the circumstances that are around me. Goliath was 10 feet tall. He was a giant of great proportion. He was so powerful that no other warrior wanted to even go anywhere near him. But God called This young David anointed him. You know what happens next? Saul says, no worries. I'll let you go and fight. And he puts all the armament on him. And we know the story so well. But David has to take it all off. I want to tell you, sometimes you want to go into battle, but you want to take everyone else's stuff with you. And think you need to fight that battle using everything else people have given you. But I want to tell you the good news is God equips you for what you need. You do not need to take someone else's armor into battle because God has already armed you for your own battle. It's time to start to strip away the things that you think you need because you don't need it. Saul needs it, but David didn't need it. David stands and he stands and he uses what God has already placed in his hand and already placed in his heart and says, use what I've given you because what I've given you will conquer giants. I don't know about you, but there's some giants that need to be conquered today. But maybe you're facing your giants using weapons of the past, not the weapons that God is already asking you to take on. I want to tell you, friends, if you haven't heard it already, I want you to hear it today, this morning. God calls the unqualified, and He qualifies the call. You've been qualified because not because of who you are and what you are. is because of who God sees you and who God is prophetically calling you to be. God saw something in this little boy and started to speak prophetically over his life. He started calling it out, and he started calling it out, and he started declaring it over his life. He said, you know who you are, David. You are the king of Israel. But you know what? Sometimes we go, well, hang on. How long before I become Israel's king? David had to wait and be patient. He had to go through the process of being refined and prepared. Because sometimes God wants to refine you and prepare you for what he's called you to do. In fact, David had to be, he may have thought, well, now I'm in Saul's palace. Now is my time to be Israel's king. But it wasn't there. He had to build a relationship with Jonathan and then flee and run from Saul for many, many years. Over over a decade, he was on the run before God anointed him and put the crown on his head. I want to tell you, sometimes we got to be patient. we got to be patient. Yes, we are called, but sometimes we need to be patient for the full manifestation of God to take place. 
I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but I sense in my spirit God wants to speak to you this morning and say to you, you've been called. You've been called, so why don't you start to begin to live out your calling? Live out the calling that God has placed upon your life. What does God require of you? He requires a spirit of humility. He requires a spirit of obedience. Like 1 Samuel 15 says, obedience is better than sacrifice. He doesn't want you just to be faithful. He doesn't want you just to be sacrificial. He wants you to be obedient. Will you be obedient to God this morning? Will you be obedient to God's prompting this morning? Because God is calling you to great things. He's declared it over your life. He doesn't call you to be just a shepherd boy. He calls you to be Israel's king. He calls you to be a man, a woman of faith, a woman of courage, a a woman, a man of boldness. So this morning, God's speaking, isn't he? Wherever you are right now, I want you to stand with me. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back and join me. I want you to stand with me because I believe that God wants to speak prophetically over your life. I believe God wants to speak into your heart right now. And he wants to speak right into the very soul of your being. And he says to you, I have called you by name. Child, you are mine. Child, you have already, I've already declared who you are to be. God wants to make a way when there seems to be no other way. God wants to give you opportunities where you never even thought possible. Everyone else has discounted you. Everyone else has thought you're not worthy. Everyone else has dismissed you. Everyone has left you in the pasture. But God's calling you into His kingdom and saying to you, you matter to me. I've called you. You matter to me. I'm going to equip you. I'm going to empower you. My Holy Spirit, I left with you so that it will empower you to do the work that I've set up, set to your feet. Young people, often you think you're not ready, but I want to tell you, the young boy David never thought he was ready. In fact, no one else thought he was ready, but God knew he was ready. He was ready. You're ready. You're ready. Are you willing to step into your calling today? Because God is calling you right now. He's called you by name. He's saying to you, I call the unqualified, and I qualify the called. God is qualifying someone right now because we need young people to lead this generation. Lead this generation like no one else has done before. To preach a message of good news. To proclaim the year of God's favor. To bind up the brokenhearted. To set the captives free. God's calling you who may think is unqualified. God's calling you, He says, I put a crown upon your head. I have anointed you to speak my message of good news. I've poured oil that covers you from the very top of your head to the very soles of your feet. And when David walked out of that room that Saul, where Saul anointed him, the Bible says that he left a trail of oil. God wants to leave a trail of love and grace upon this generation. Or our nation needs Men and women, young men and women, willing to be obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, willing to go out and do what He has called you to do. You say, I haven't been called. You say, I haven't, been, I haven't heard His voice yet. Oh, He's been speaking to you. He's been speaking to you for longer than you realize. It's time for action. It's time for a response. Revival is here, and God is calling you to respond. Oh, young people, this is your time. This is your season to lead our nation in a way that it hasn't been before. This is to break generations of mistrust, generations of injustice and inequality. You are called to be His mouthpiece. You are called to be His hands and His feet. He has anointed you to respond. Those of us who are a bit more mature on the journey, 
It's our time to fan the flame within this generation of young people. It's our chance to fan the flame and to go. And we will encourage you. We'll be your Barnabas. We'll be the ones that tell you, you got to keep going. We'll be the ones that stand and praise in your corner. Every generation has its responsibility. But it's a generation, the younger generation's responsibility to take on the baton and lead. It's your generation to lead, to bring breakthrough, to bring a word that's relevant to our nation. So wherever you are now, I want you to be standing with me because I want to speak to you prophetically this morning. I want to speak to you this morning because I believe God is saying to you, I've called you and your excuses no longer matter because I'm about to do something in you that is so powerful that you will prophesy, that you will speak in a way that people go, wow, what is this new amazing teaching that you're bringing? You'll speak so prophetically to this nation that it will shake it to its very foundation. So will you rise up with me, young people? Heavenly Father, I pray for every young man, woman across this nation right now that your spirit will fall powerfully upon them. And just like David did, David started to prophesy. Lord, I pray that they will start prophesying over our nation. They will prophesy words of deliverance, words of hope, words of victory, that you will raise up an army of young men and women ready to fight for freedom, for justice, for love and grace. Oh Lord, I pray right now that the same anointing that fell upon David will fall upon this younger generation. I pray, Lord, that the anointing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will start to pour down upon this generation and they will recognize that they've been called by name to lead a people that had lost direction and lost focus. Oh, Lord, let it be so. Let my eyes see what your Word is already bringing into season. Let my eyes see, God, what, what you already are stirring and manifesting. Let it be so, Lord. Let it be so. And I pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. If you're watching our live stream this morning, and if God is speaking to you this morning, won't you connect to us through satrconnect.org. We want to hear from you this morning. If God is speaking to you and He's challenging you, we want to hear from you. satrconnect.org. We want to hear you connect to us. What God is calling you. We want to hear what God is calling you to be. Because we want to pray for you. We want to empower you. We want to release you. We want to see you do all that God is calling you to be. God's best to you. God's blessing. Why don't you worship with us? Why don't you worship with us? Lift your hands to the air and sing with us. So we worship you. Yes, so we worship you. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Because you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. The way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
worship you. We worship you because you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Sing that one last time. The way maker, miracle worker, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, that is who you are. 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 you are right now, as you're singing that song, I want to pray that God will start to supernaturally start to change your mindset, that God will start to change your focus, that God will give you a courage and a confidence that you never had before. Oh Lord, I pray for a supernatural touch upon every young man and woman. Lord, I'm praying for a generational change to take place, that you'll break the chains of bondage, that you will loosen people's feet so they will start to dance and sing and step up and do things they never thought possible. Lord, you're calling out the Davids amongst this generation. You're calling out the stand true to come out from the pasture and stand in the palace and accept their anointing and calling. Oh God, you're calling men and women to step up to go into ministry, full-time ministry. You're calling young men and women to be evangelists, to be proclaimers of healing, to speak out a word of deliverance, a word of victory, a word of promise, a word of hope, a word of joy. Oh God, you're calling young men and women to stand true to who they are because they are part of the tribe of Israel. We are part of the tribe of the kingdom of God. We're not citizens of this world. We're citizens of heaven. God, you're calling young men and women to step up and be all that they call to be. Oh God, I pray that there'll be a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit that will start to blow and bring freedom and liberty. That there'll be a blow of the Holy Spirit that will bring your favor upon our generation that they will know they are called and set apart by Jesus. Oh Lord, let it be so. Let it be so now. Because you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. And Lord, we want to praise you for what you're doing and what you are going to continue to do. Because he will be out of good work in you, young men and women. He will bring it to completion. He's going to bring it to completion. In Acts, we read that when David had finished, the Word of God said he served the purposes of his generation. Serve the purpose of your generation. Your generation needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And David, he passed from this earth to live with the King Jesus after he had served the purpose of his generation. Serve the generation you're in right now because they need to hear you. They need to hear the God in you. Amen. 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 You have been challenged. And so go out into this new week, making, following the path that the Lord has set before you. Let's close with our blessing uh, to, as we bless the name of the Lord and as we bless one another. Let's sing, the Lord bless you and keep you. upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's sing that again. The Lord 
God bless you. God bless you.